Hi, it's Mizzy again. Um, I've had a couple of questions about the um, the other YouTube that I put out about the um, altered books, and um, people were wanting to know, you know, kind of how I did some of it, um, especially like the the texture on the covers. And um, I thought I'd just really, you know, go over it. It's not hard, and I think everybody should do it. It's a lot of fun. Um, kids love to do it. My boys. Uh, you know, this is one of those really fun things that you can, you know, oh, you've got the family, you know, coming and, oh, it's a holiday and you've got, you know, kids especially can sit down and just make some fun stuff. So um, here we go. My husband did try to teach me how to do the, um, the video camera, but I just wasn't very good at that. And so we're just going to do this. I'm going to work one handed and balance you on my hip and use the webcam. All right, you, this I showed in the last one and, and I haven't changed it since then. I haven't worked on it, but you can see, you know, hopefully the texture. This is all gessoed to give it, um, you know, a good base to, you know, for paints and stains and stuff. But um, what I'm gonna show you right now is how to do this. This was the very first layer. And it's just this gift tissue. You get them in your gift bags. Your kids get them, birthday parties, stuff. Um, I never throw this stuff away, uh, even if it's all crinkly. Crinkly is very good for this anyway, so awesome. You are also going to need school glue, uh, just any kind of cheap school glue. Um, this was obviously um, Ash's glue, so we're going to use that. And pour it in a little cup. I just use, I save everything. I try not to buy much. This is just the bottom of one of the boys' water bottles that I cut off. Uh, and we're going to add glue in there. Ooh, you know, just however much. And then uh, I always cut it with water. And it's going to be like, oh, not quite half and half. Um, Let's set this right here and stir it. And just use a funky old cheap brush for this. You know, you really don't have to go crazy on anything. Um, it's just going to make a super, super thin paste. Uh, you know, this is a great way to use up like that little bit of glue that's left in the bottom of your kid's glue thing. You can add texture to something and you don't have to waste it and teach them not to waste stuff. This was not actually a book, obviously. This was one of those fake book boxes. Uh, it, I got it in the donation thing. It was free. It had been a Christmas-themed monstrosity. And part of the stuff had broken out. So I just removed all of that broken stuff. And um, it had some of that, like, vinyl-y slick stuff. So, you know, I just kind of ripped that out, too. And what you're going to do is you're going to take, I hope I'm in the frame here, uh, and you're just going to just kind of sloppily just kind of swirl it around. You want, you want to get, you know, not so much running, but, you know, kind of puddly. And then, you know, you're just going to, you're going to rip little pieces off and stick them on. Okay, this, you don't want to smooth it out because smoothing it out defeats the purpose of texturing. And you just kind of flip it up and, oh, you need some more here and there. You just kind of splash and slop and smush and, and put it back on. And like I said, don't try to, you know, if, if it looks too straight, just take it and scooch it in a little bit. You know, however much, you know, wrinkles you want. And honestly, I'm not even really concerned about, you know, how it's hanging over the edges because I will either rip it off or I'll fold it back in on itself. This is so forgiving that you couldn't possibly, no one could possibly mess this up. And that is so awesome because that's the way we roll around here. Okay, you're just going to start just keep dipping it so your brush stays kind of drippy wet. 
and then just go over the top of it after it starts sticking and all the little little air bubbles you want to try to get all of those out that is really the only thing that you want to kind of pay attention to is your air bubbles uh, because when it dries it this will be a little bit hard like a little shell and you don't want to have air bubbles because they will kind of pop and it looks you know you know, you can, and that's not even tragedy either. You can just, if you've got a place that looks funky, like say, oh, this is a little funky spot, and you just put more glue water on it, and you just flop it, put another little piece over it. See? No problem. I kind of sound like that guy from the 70s, the, the painting guy, what is his name, Bob Ross. It's just going to live here. But you just keep doing that. Um, and... You know, you can get some really great, funky little, wrinkly, crinkly. Oh, there's an air bubble. If you got an air bubble, you just smooth it to the edge or just tap, tap, tap. And it will come out. Yep. See those air bubbles? That. Does it go to the side? Whoop. There we go. All right. We're rid of it now. Sweet. But that's all you have to do. And if you want to do like the tree where it had some more three-dimensionality to it, you're just going to take your same, and it doesn't matter what color this is, um, because you're going to gesso, which is going to be so forgiving and unifying. Uh, it's just going to go like a primer straight over it. Um, so you want to do, you know, some tree. It's better to do it in layers, I think. Um, you know, you do this all over. You let it dry, and... Then you decide, okay, well, I would like to have a tree or whatever. You just take, you're going to take a piece, and you're going to wad it up a lot more like this. You're going to wad it up. And you can, you're going to have to put some more, because you're wadding it, you're going to need more gluey water. Right? Because you're smooshing it together, and it's going to have to hold together more. And at first, you're just going to get the basic shape. Um, so you're just going to stick it down and stick it down. And you can kind of push it. See how it's, it's kind of bunching up right there? And, you know, you, want, you, want, you don't want it like a straight tree. You want a lot of twists, like an old oak tree. You know, it has a lot of good character. So we're going to twist it this way and twist it that way. And because you have all this extra that's in the middle where you squished it together, you got all this extra, you just keep putting this stuff on because you want, you know, you want it to set up. So you put more on and then, you know, you push it together and it just really pops up, you know, dimensionally off of your, you know, whether you're doing it on a canvas or an altered book or, you know, you don't have to limit yourself. Do this on anything you want. Um, okay, just like I said, actually I would do this all over and then do the three-dimensional work that you want and you're going to let it dry. I live in central Texas, so the sun beats down, especially since the wildfire <laughs> Burned all of our trees. There's a lot of sun. So I take advantage of that solar power and I sit it outside on a little black bench that I have right in the sun. And it just really dries this out super fast. Um, okay, once you get done with that part, you can go back over it. You can attach anything that has um, texture to it. Uh, Let's go back over here and I'll show you kind of some of the stuff I have on here. Uh, if you look very closely, there are all kinds of different laces. Everything from like that cheap, funky 70s uh, curtain sh shears. Uh, there's, you know, little bits of doily. Um, like this right here. 
I have Dusty Miller going crazy in the garden. So these are just Dusty Miller leaves that I pressed in a book overnight. Um, you know, some... This is just a, like netting, just like bridal netting. And you just rip it. Just rip it. Put it on there with your... Just use this and your glue. And if you need it to be a little stiffer, that's fine. Uh, to attach like the leaves and, and this heavier stuff, I use Mod Podge or anything kind of like that. Um, you know, just get it to stick down there, coat it on the bottom, stick it on, coat it on the top to seal it down. Um, then you can take all these little bits of fun stuff. Um, you know, this one I'm kind of doing like a little forest fairy uh, nymph sort of thing. So I'm going to use this little this little cutout. And this, you can use anything. Okay, this happened to come out of one of those, oh, it's an official, uh, you know, clip art type book where, you know, it's, it's, free, it's a free for all. Uh, you can use that. You can go through magazines. Okay, listen, you know, I'm sure there's copyright laws on some of this stuff, uh, ads and stuff. It's art, people, okay? If you're not selling it, then absolutely use everything and anything. It, you know, if you're selling it and you're, like, really worried that somebody's going to come and get you, uh, you know, just use your judgment. Um, I am not here to get you all in trouble. Uh, I'm not here to get myself in trouble. That would be bad. Uh, this is not copyrighted. It's infringement for you, so. Uh, but there's little, just the ugliest stuff. Uh, go to garage sales and buy those bags of hideous jewelry that's broken for like, a, you know, a quarter and look at them and say, a quarter? Can I just get it for like, if I buy this other thing, you know, say there's something that you really want, can you just kind of throw this in? It's just a quarter. A lot of times they'll do that or you go at the end of the into the garage sale and they've got stuff left over, fabrics, laces, you know, uh, these little things. Just, you know, say, hey, you know, I know they didn't sell. You know, here's a buck. Can I just load the truck up, you know? And a lot of times they're just super happy to say yes, go for it. Um, and then I attach this stuff with Goop. Goop, it is awesome. Uh, there's also E6000. I use that as well. Uh, you can find this. I get this, you know, just at my local uh, department store. And uh, it's really pretty cheap, like three bucks, three and a half bucks. And you can get it in the hardware section or you can go to the craft section and they've got a smaller tube for the same price. It's called crafting, but it's the same stuff. So, you know, however that works out. Okay. And then you're going to use gesso. Uh, you can get gesso pretty much everywhere. I live super far away from civilization, and occasionally I cannot find, you know, things uh, locally, and I really don't like to go to town. I just don't like to, so I either have my daughter pick it up for me because she lives, you know, in a big city, or um, sometimes I just go like on Amazon or, you know, just Hobby Lobby or whatever, just go to a, an online site, and you can order this stuff online. You know, it's not a big deal. Just, it's fine. Just do that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do some of this to the rest of this page. And I'm also going to put it around the edges. I do have a piece of paper that I have cut. And I'm going to put that in there. Now, we're not just going to leave it like that. My kids, you know, I am not here to tell anybody how to do anything. Personally, I'm going to really layer this up. And it's going to have a lot of stuff. Images, paint, stain, uh, three-dimensional things. I even have, you know, some cool little foresty stuff uh, that I'm going to include. But do whatever you want to. Uh, remember, this is art, and art is fun. Uh, I sell pretty well, uh, but... I think anybody can. It's all in your attitude, really. Uh, I don't want to make a million dollars. I don't want to make $10,000. I just want to make enough to buy more art supplies 
and to like pay some of the bills. Um, you know, we've been very blessed, and I want to thank again uh, all you people out there that uh, were part of that. And uh, much love to you. And you know, maybe one day I'll get a little more um, business oriented and more, um, you know, oh, I want to get out there and be like a, a you know grown up artist or whatever. But honestly, it's a, it just has to come from your heart. Uh, and right now, I'm just a little traumatized, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just working at my own speed right now. And I'm sort of playing around with new um, techniques and um, new mediums, things that kind of mix it up a little bit. And um, you should do the same. Uh, I do the, the folk art dolls, and I really, really enjoy doing the folk art dolls. I've done them since I was a little girl. Um, but if you get locked into something, you know, you don't want it to stop um, feeling fresh in your mind because as soon as you turn it into a, oh, i got to do all this, oh, it's just going to look like that. And your art's really going to look like you had to do it. Um, you know, uh, you know, just do whatever you want, really, basically. Don't listen to me. Uh, all right, well, I'm rambling, and that's my cue. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any more questions, um, just shout me out, and... Uh, I will try to start making a few more of these. Um, they're very sporadic. It's just like, okay, I've got a moment, so I'm going to do this, and uh, hopefully I can continue to do that. All right. Um, everybody have a great day. Bye.